I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. Uh, William, William Patterson was a real good school. You know, I really enjoyed everything over there. Um, you know, since it was a Division three school, you know, it wasn't that big of a big of a campus or whatnot compared to these other campuses. Yeah. And the athletics wasn't as serious as you know a Division one campus would be. But you know, I mean, I love my experience there. Division three competition is a hit or miss. Uh, I played in the NJAC, so. I'm, that was pretty competitive. You have some teams that are that are good, and you have some teams that are not so good. Uh, but all in all, you know, it's, it's basketball at the end of the day. The people on the opposite side is playing as hard as they can, and that, that's really it. You know, I'm, really, I'm making this podcast underrated, just so people can see my story and see my journey from coming from a small school like William Patterson. And hopefully, at the end of the journey, I'm in the NBA. And, you know, I want to inspire young players, people that play Division Two, even people that play low Division One and Division Three, that anything is possible if you put your mind into it and you work hard enough. And I feel like, you know, everybody loves the, loves the person that's winning, but nobody's really supporting the underdog. And, you know, I feel like this is my place. I feel like I'm the one that's supposed to be telling this story because I already know what's going to happen. I know I'm going to make it to the NBA. I'm not just saying that because that's just, that's, you know, some of y'all might hear that and be like, oh, man, yeah, he just one of those kids that's saying that. But I honestly believe that deep in my heart that I'm going to make it. Underrated means to me uh, being overlooked, uh, being judged before I even get on the court. I feel like when I get into one of these combines or I go work out for a team, the fact that I don't go to one of these high-level Division I schools, they already overlooked me. And I got work 10 times harder than the next guy because I have to make a name for myself. So Sunday, workout number two. I head to the city to go work out with Nate. You know, he trained guys like Tobias Harris and you know, most of the NBA draftees go over there to work out with
man, it's nothing like a hard day of work. Just really putting that work in. Water, Gatorade. Gotta stay hydrated, man. That was a good ass workout. Shit, you know what I mean? You know, you know it was a tough workout when you were in there the whole time and you just fucking up. Last year was a real tough year, you know, mentally, physically, and emotionally. Yeah. I went to Vegas for a combine, and you know, I, I was working really hard leading up to the combine. And, you know, I get to Vegas, you know, first my flight was delayed while I was in the plane for like four hours. And we get to Vegas around two o'clock, we couldn't check into the room until 3 p.m. We, get, we got there at 2 a.m., we couldn't check into 3 p.m. the next day. So we really just had to sit around the casino all day. And luckily, you know, we ended up getting a room, but probably like five hours later. So, you know, it was just, it was just this wasn't a good, this wasn't really a good, good planning on my behalf. And, you know, I went into the pool, just relaxing, just enjoying my time with my girlfriend. You know, and as soon as I step out the pool, like, you know, I feel this sharp pain in my knee. And that pain was, you know, kept me out of the first game. I played like two minutes that first game in the combine. I had to check myself out. The next two games, I couldn't really play the way I really wanted to play. I mean, I caught a really nice dunk that opened a lot of eyes and I scored 22 against the best team in the whole camp. So, you know, to myself, I know I'm able to play. I know I'm able to do what I was supposed to do, but I just physically, I couldn't do it. You know, then uh, I met my agent later on that summer and he flew me out to Canada to work out for uh, Windsor Express. So, you know, I was excited. You know, I got, my agent flew me out. You know, I had a chauffeur come pick me up. They drove me into Canada. Uh, you know, I got there pretty late, but you know, the workout was really early. So as soon as I got there, you know, I went to sleep just to get ready for the workout in the morning. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I just thought it was gonna be a workout, a few people working out, but you know, kind of my surprise, as soon as I get to the gym, it's a it's a tournament that the, the team was actually throwing that invited of the professional teams and they put me on their team to play just so they can evaluate me. And I had a I had a I had a pretty I had a pretty solid game, you know, to say the least. You know, so I did enough for them to invite me back to a workout a whole month later. So, you know, the month, you know, it was a long month, but the month the month went by. I went back out there and I was expecting the same thing. I thought it was gonna, you know, be another tournament, but this time it was about, you know, twenty guys in the gym. It was a five-hour workout. You know, we all just competing as hard as we can. All of us trying to get a contract. And you know, luckily, you know, I had a I had a real solid day because you know I just been preparing myself for this for so long. I went in there with a mentality that I'm not leaving without a contract, and that's what I did. You know, at the end of the con at the end of the little workout, you know, Coach Jones, the coach from Winslow, you know, told me, uh, you know, they're gonna bring me back to training camp, and you know, they're gonna sign me. So you know, that was really exciting. Uh, a couple of days later, I remember I was in the car, I was talking to my girl, and I got an email from uh, one of the uh, people that worked for the Windsor Express organization, uh, you know, telling me that they want to sign me. So, you know, it was, that was really exciting, man. That was like one of the most proudest moments of my life, I'll say. Uh, but then, you know, it changed really fast. A few, a few uh, weeks later, I, I got an email from the same person telling me I've been traded to uh, St. John uh, Riptides. And it was just, to me, it was a surprise to me because, you know, I never, you know, you play 2K and you get traded, your mind play gets traded, but this was real life. Like I got traded, I didn't even, I didn't even know that was possible. So, you know, it, was, it came as a surprise. I was still excited, but um, my agent, you know, reached out to the coach over there a few times, but the coach never got back to us. So it was just, it was really weird, you know, like you get traded to a team and you don't really hear nothing back, you don't hear anything. So it was just, it was just, it was just a weird situation. Um, another one of the players that was traded with me, you know, he contacted me on Facebook, just, you know, basically telling me, you know, he's going through the same thing, they're not getting it back to him. So it was just, it was just you know, it was just, it was just a weird situation. And then finally, you know, they got back to me and like the, the message literally said, be at Boston on this date at this time. So that was it. So I went, I went to Boston. Uh, I met up with the other players over there, you know, just introduced myself. You know, it was all cool. It was six hours from Boston to St. John's, Canada, and 
man, the culture change that I see just crossing the border is ridiculous, man. Like, it was, it was so crazy. I never seen nothing like that in my life. So I get to St. John, and you know, we had a, we had practice, we had training camp started the next day. And it was good, man. Like, I really, I really enjoyed myself out there. You know, I, you know, I really felt like a pro. I, you know, I just woke up, went to practice, came back, just relax, you know, do the same thing over again, just go back, just work out, work out, work out. And, you know, then it just all, it really just went downhill, you know. Um, I remember after our exhibition game, coach uh, called the hotel room and my roommate uh, told me, coach on the line. And, you know, the funniest thing about it is, you know, we made jokes earlier that, you know, the coach was on the line, you know, trying to cut one of us. So it was just a joke, but this time, you know, he was like, yo, coach on the line. I'm like, I thought he was playing again, but he was serious. And, you know, coach told me come downstairs in the lobby. So I walked to the lobby and, you know, he basically told me, uh, you know, he's gonna have to let me go. He didn't release me. And, uh, he was, you know, he, you know, he's telling you regular things that he probably told everybody else that, you know, you're really good. You know, you can definitely play in this league, blah, 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 whatnot. So, you know, in my mind, I was just listening to him, but I was just, honestly, I was, I was just heated. I was mad because I felt like I did everything right to make the team, you know? So, you know, but then I, you know, I, it, it took me a while to really understand that it's really a business and it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, really personal. And it wasn't that, you know, it was, I, I sucked or something, you know what I mean? Cause in the eyes of, in the eyes of people, when you come back home and you tell them like, whatever you got released, you know, they automatically assume that you went out there and you know you can play like shit, but you know what they don't understand is this shit is a business. Like you, they try to make money, it's a business, you know. And you know, I, I mean, it's my first time going through it, you know. So it's it was a really good learning experience, man. And you know, I learned from it a lot. And this next year coming up, you know, I know what I got to do in training camp now. You know what I'm saying? Like I know exactly what to expect, and it's gonna be a real good year coming up. Workout number three, best trainer, John. Shout out to Leo Jones, man, really good dude. So, you know, right now, you know, my situation isn't that much different than it was last year. And you probably wondering what keeps me motivated. And to be honest with you, it's the love for the game. It's the 
love of basketball. I can't I can't picture myself doing anything besides playing ball. So you know, I went when I got home. I went and took a real estate class. I went to take a real estate class because I was like, fuck it, let me start let me start making some bread. You know what I mean? And the three weeks that I was taking that real estate class, it opened up my mind again to like, no, I do not want to be sitting in the office in a cubicle all day. So it just it really. It really brought back the love. Like it's, it's silly to say, but sometimes you do have to take a break and step away from it, just so you can understand how much you miss it, and you know you can't take it for granted. Because you know, at the end of the day, you gonna have people that's gonna doubt you, and you are gonna have people that's gonna support you. But the most important thing is, if you believe in yourself, you wanna achieve anything. So, you know, I really had to step back and really just you know look myself in the mirror and, and, and you know tell myself that. It, this is what I really want to do. I got to really do it. I can't be over here BSing. So it's just, it's just tough, man. It's a tough situation coming from a small school, but I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. I know where I have to start. It's all part of my journey. Stay tuned. Underrated.